it'll be improved because that's how this works is that everyone just sort of throws in a bunch of stuff and then big incestuous code pile results yeah. in something less bad um by the way let me uh point out that um because of bad mood today. some people may have noticed that the maps are being restricted in evolution rts now in these in the evo rts dedicated servers and that is because people were joining we'd have like 20 people uh spectating a game and uh they have doing the map people would keep typing next map next map next map and so before you know it people are downloading 20 maps you know and never getting actually into a game and so uh nork mentioned he's like just put on a map list and we'll sort it out from there you know once once everything dies down a little bit and i i agreed and so there's actually it's a fairly large map list it's 11 maps but oh. it's uh, 11 of probably the more common maps that we play on the get-togethers. So, yeah. Uh, in case anyone's curious why uh, maybe oh, if you tried to... Game is starting, apparently. Yeah, two versus two. Interesting. Okay, so we'll just get that once it starts up, and apparently there's... Okay, someone in the chat wants to point out the fact. Is there frequently asked questions for Evo Yes. Uh, yes, um... Just how to play... F yes, tab. there is. Actually, let me, uh, let me post some links in the chat for him. And, uh... Okay. Yeah, there's... I've got several links. Um, the first of which will be to the Steam forums. Uh, a lot of questions have already been oh, answered. Oh, yeah, um, actually, your, your how to play page is out of date. Yeah, and actually, I did do a, uh, a, uh, crash course... Thing, which I posted in the spring forums a long time ago, but it's still, you know, very much relevant. Uh, there's there's a couple of the things, and there's also the thread in the forums that is uh, basically um, if Evo questions and answers thread. Uh, there's been a lot of questions answered in there, and also I've been pinning. Um, Sorry, I got stuck reading one of the thor forum threads. No, Titles. <laughs> yeah, it's... Bad timing. <laughs> yeah. Focus. Um, basically, so yes, a lot of the more pertinent questions, I've been actually just pinning the topic because I've answered it, and, you know, just so I don't have to uh, keep answering them over and over again. Right. Um, But, yeah. it's It's been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also tonight I'm planning on doing a lot of work on the wiki to kind of help get it a bit more ship shape yeah. oh actually one thing I should point out once this game starts though it's taking a little while if you hold down the, okay here's a really important tip general tip for spring based games space bar is a modifier key mm -hmm. this is a really important but unintuitive thing your space bar is your fourth modifier key after shift control and alt you have space it's often referred to as meta in the various game documentations and so forth, but sometimes it's referred to as space. Now, one really big thing, the game has started, and before I get into the details of the game, I'm just going to focus on this. Hold the space bar, and it, you get some useless information about position. If you click on something, you get a stats window, which actually at this point seems to have bugged out slightly in terms of the description. But anyway, it'll give you description, it'll give you stats, it'll give you all the weapons, all their damage, everything you need to know about the weapons. You can actually do this for multiple things at once in order to compare them. Though admittedly right now there's only the Oversteer in play, but you can do this for as many arbitrary objects as you want to get all their stats. So if you're curious about how anything in the game works, hold down the space bar and click on it. It won't give you all the little strategy information you might want, but it will give you the basic information regarding statistics and regarding the way that everything works. So just bear that in mind, it's a very useful tool. It appears that RAR has found the amphibious oh, yeah. factory. Really in here. So, yeah, this is... Oh, Gode and... Okay, Commander Kickbutt is not in-game, though Gode versus two players is still going to be pretty hard for the two players. Anyway, with... So, Gode starting out with Amphibious Tank Factory in the northeast corner of the map, and RAR... Amphibious Tank Factory in the Southeast, and Monuments to all your 
Sin is starting in the southwest. We have a newer player just figuring out how to set this up. He did move his overseer over from the limited start box over to the end. Oh, another thing to point out is to start chatting, hold hit enter. And you'll notice you'll see little things like A or S or I think I think it's about it in here. And just type in a message and it'll just show up. Mm-hmm. If you hit the slash with the slash before it, you can get certain commands. Those are on the spring website and for if you could post those in the chat that'd be great. And then the spring website is a big list of all the slash commands you can use. And things like, I mean, I'm using map marks or res bar things that have to hide certain things, but you can do a lot of different, there's a lot of different commands, most of which don't make the biggest difference for the game itself. Most of them are UI related. There are a couple, like, cheats, for example, just to test stuff, which use slash cheat and it works. You have to be the boss of the game to make that work, though. But anyway, what else is there? Other details. Well, your menu, I mean... That's possibly straightforward. I mean, the integral menu is a little bit confusing. You have all these different tabs, which have hotkeys associated with them. And that is, that lets you build everything. Your orders tab is basic orders. Control W is the easiest way to make mexes. You hit it, you draw a circle, it creates mexes. I can't do it because I'm not playing right now. This is Godez developer here. But that is the easiest way to build metal extractors. Holding the shift if you're building something and you, you hold down the shift key, it'll make a line. Holding shift and control will make a set line. Shift and alt makes boxes, and shift control alt makes a hollow box. I've actually gone over this in other tutorials for 0k, but it seems worth going over again. Let's see what else is there. I have... Well, I guess if you hold F10, gets you your settings menu. Is that, like I said, this is the settings menu. One nice thing about the settings menu is that you can actually... Or, no, you can't search. Okay. Newer versions of the settings menu allow you to actually search it. I'm not sure why Forb hasn't set that up, but yeah, it, there's a lot of settings, so that's one thing to keep in mind. You once can again, search widgets list, if that's yeah, what you're talking about. You can also search Epic Menu in the latest version. Oh. Yep. Also, for most widgets, if you hold space and click, once again, your friend gets you all the settings you need for that widget. It's a little bit iffy because not it doesn't always count what the widget is, but usually if you hit the parts of the widget that aren't click through, like these buttons are not click through, you can just space click on them and that'll cause you to get your menu. You can space click on this and it'll get you the selection widget, like everything you need, space click on the minimap, space click on the outside here, get the map extension widget, which actually I don't know if I want fog on. And you can space click anywhere to get settings. So yeah, settings are a little bit... There's a lot of settings. There are ways to reduce the amount of effort it takes to get settings for a particular thing. But that's another thing to be worked on. On an entertaining note, God has run himself completely out of energy. Oh yeah, I should probably point out the game. Yeah, Gode has only got about 10 generators right now. 9 he energy coming in. Overseer. Oh, he did. Oh, wow, okay. If and he that thinks means... about it, he can take the uh, his allies overseer now. He could. Not sure if he's going to go that route, but he should. At any rate, you can actually rebuild overseers. By the way, the all terrain factory. No, it's not all terrain factory. It's any engineer. It's... Yeah, any engineer in the specials tab has overseer as a construction option. It's 150 metal, which is quite a lot, but it's still there. It's something you can rebuild. Mainly useful for the fact that it's all terrain and the fact that it does have the EMP attack. And it looks like Gode is setting up a bunch of snakes here. Getting ready for a big attack with Crusher in the back. And Rar is going to be completely unprepared for this. He did have an immolator set up. That immolator is not going to do him much good. However, he did have a lightning rod behind it and that will do him a lot of good. Working out a lot better than the last time. Has himself nicely set for defense. And on the other hand, Monument to All Your Sin has an air fac up, he's apparently still trying to figure this out. So this is a good thing to look at, although Gode, I think he's actually just tearing him to shreds. That's probably why it's a bit of a problem. So yeah, lightning rods, definitely quite good to to build, especially against raiders. They have a lot of damage versus light. Just point that out, by the way, that the weapons you'll see in the tooltips have, they mentioned light armor and buildings. There are armor categories in EVO RTS. You'll notice when you hover over a unit, you do see their armor category. 
It's right below their name. Very important thing to work on there, and... Uh, ew. Okay. Uh, well, sorry, the people in the chat are starting to starting to creep me out a bit. Oh. Just, I, I don't care what you do, just, just do it in the privacy of your own home. And clean up afterwards. That's... that's, um... okay. <laughs> I don't want to see buddy. it or hear it or smell it. Now, anyway. Oh yeah, I should point out too, for people wondering, storage, especially people who are playing other spring-based games, storages are actually useful in Evo RTS because energy is needed to fire weapons. The more storages you have, the more energy you have in reserve for a fight, so the more units you can support firing simultaneously. And Gole is going down with his... Getting his own Wildcat set up, he has a bunch of factors here. Rar not really got a whole lot to go in here. He's only got two metal worth of income. Monument to Sin has hardly any, and Gode has a bunch of stuff in the middle. Rar trying to get the snake, but the snake is not being used enough. I mean, Rar, I'm not sure what he's paying attention to right now, because apparently the Cursor Widget doesn't exist in this game, but. Rar trying to harass as best he can. He's getting rid of a couple of the metal extractors once the Wildcat comes back around. It's going to be difficult. I think Rar is probably going to have to throw in this game once again. Nice job trying to get rid of this, though. Trying to just break down these metal extractors, but not paying enough attention to actually get rid of all of them efficiently. Now, bear in mind, spring-based games, you can just queue up orders. And not only can you queue up orders, you can also make lines of orders. So, you don't have to hold the shift button. You just draw a line with the right mouse button. A single unit will follow that line. A bunch of units will use that to make a formation. Extremely useful bit of UI there. Mm -hmm. That uh, formations is, yeah, pretty huge in EVO because it's all about how you manage your blob. <laughs> and Yeah, because EVO is not the most micromanagement-focused game. It's probably somewhere in the middle as far as micromanagement focus in, in spring games. Like, there is some use for it. Your units do last long enough that dodging shots is effective. Targeting fire, target, or focus firing on things is extremely effective. That micro, that bit of micromanagement is usually key. In this case, there were too many copperheads for that to matter, but yeah, focus firing is a Im very important thing. Shot dodging is not as useful as it would be in 0k. But individual unit control is much more useful than, say, Nada. Yeah, well, the, uh... Honestly, it's more about your concave, really. Um... For example, uh, you know, you hear, like, for example, in uh, StarCraft 2, you'll hear them talk about concave all the time, you know, so-and-so has mm -hmm. a great concave. Well, here it matters in a little bit different context, more the fact that uh, even if your units are in a big blob, they can still all fire, um, which they can in StarCraft 2, but on the other hand, the way the damage works is, as you know, completely different. So, yeah. essentially, the point is, is that you want to maximize the amount of damage you're doing to an area. So, for example, let's say somebody has their units in a conga line, and you hit it from one side, you know, you're obviously just going to, you know, kind of rake them over the coals that way, because... All their units are out of position. As you can see right like here, that. actually. Yeah, exactly. But he's trying to come in. There is, he is coming in in a line though, and that's not actually mattering because the droplets is too much. Yeah, it's the number of droplets is way too much. <laughs> it won't. Uh, yeah, it won't matter too much in this case. But you know, if you if you start getting blob versus blob armies, great. Oh man, well, really? That hmm. is. Oh well, that's that should be game. Yeah. Rar is doing his best to surrender. Yeah, the the menu, if you hit uh, the X on it, and you can do resign and spectate, and that basically tells the server, hey, I, I want to quit. I quit. I'm out. All right. 